After the relative success of the first Dune film, we approached the release of the second film in anticipation. Planet of Arrakis, a fictional world in orbit around the star of Canopus, is certainly an interesting place, but at around 0.6 astronomical units from such a powerful star, it apparently defies the laws of physics. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to revisit Alpha Carinae, Canopus, and speculate on what the system might be like. So, let's get to it. First of all, this isn't the first time we've looked into the planet Dune. And if you're interested, there is an older video where we reference some of the more intricate details, and I'll link it in the description. Canopus is of course the second brightest star in the night sky, outshone only by Sirius, with a visual apparent magnitude of minus 0.74. 310 light years from the Sun, it's a bright giant of spectral type A9, boasting luminosity over 10,000 times that of the Sun, 8 times as massive, and a radius 71 times that of our Sun. Currently undergoing core helium burning, Canopus is in the blue loop phase of its evolution, having passed through its first red giant branch and going through a process of reheating. Due to its sudden position in the sky, Canopus never rises in mid to far northern latitudes, so it's difficult to see it in the northern hemisphere. A BV colour index of plus 0.15 makes Canopus essentially white, although it has been described as yellow-white, appearing less yellow than Altair or Procyon. The designation of A9 is on the boundaries of the F-class. It's thought that a magnetically active M dwarf named Canopus B shares a proper motion with Canopus, with a projected separation of a whopping 6.19 light years. Incredibly, this lies still within the estimated tidal radius of Canopus, making it a potential binary. In fact, no star closer to our Sun than Canopus is more luminous than it, which makes it periodically the brightest star in Earth's night sky. Indeed, in 480,000 years' time, Canopus will usurp Sirius once again and remain the brightest star for another 500,000 years. It's not surprising, then, that Canopus is considered the real giant star of our local vicinity. That said, it does seem to fall between being a true supergiant and a mere giant star, also in between the F to A-class stars, and not only that, being an intermediate mass star that is also on the boundaries and may not be massive enough to trigger a core collapse and therefore a supernova. Alternatively, Canopus could end up as a neon oxygen white dwarf in the future. So, it's fair to say that Canopus is a true in-between a star. Currently moving away from the Sun, it made its closest approach to us at a distance of about 172 light years, 3.1 million years ago, and a maximum brightness of minus 1.86, substantially brighter than Sirius today. The star's radius, if it were in our solar system, would extend 90% of the way to the orbit of Mercury. So this begs the question, how is it even thought possible that our fictional planet, Dune, also known as Arrakis, could be so close to it and yet still support life? I won't go through the story of Dune here today, but Dune, nicknamed Arrakis, is marked by particular features in its northern hemisphere, believed to be ancient water basins. Major settlements on Arrakis are concentrated only in these regions, as the rest of the planet is thought in hospitable desert. The truth is, at such a close distance to Canopus of just 0.6 astronomical units, it would likely be a lava world rather than a desert, and the planet's precise composition consists mainly of silicates with light gases like hydrogen and helium that escaped into space. The Dune novels do mention an extensive dust cloud near Canopus that leads to ice age periods and scatters Canopus sunlight apparently, potentially contributing to Arrakis's lower temperatures. The potential for such a dust cloud to dim the star does offer an explanation for such a reduced temperature by possibly thousands of degrees lower than the actual planet would be otherwise. But even a dust cloud would not stop much of the infrared radiation from the star. Canopus is also in the midst of a blue loop phase, where it goes through temperature fluctuations during its stellar evolution. So it has been through relatively cooler periods, but this happened over millions of years, not on a yearly basis. And it doesn't necessarily help the planet, as the star, even in its cooler periods, still remains far too powerful either way. One of the better explanations is that the presence of other irregularly orbiting planets in the Canopus system could lead to significant disruptions in Arrakis's orbit and seasons. Perhaps Arrakis has a very, very eccentric orbit, leading it far out from its known position, even though even this probably wouldn't help that much. The habitable zone around Canopus is vast, and it would begin at around 98 astronomical units, extending to 173, so we can see the difference, 0.6 astronomical units where Dune is thought to be, extending to 98 astronomical units where it might actually become habitable. 
Arrakis's irregular orbit is stated to be influenced by two large orbiting planets in the system, known as the Sisters, perhaps a bit like Jupiter and Saturn in our own system, and they are thought to cause dramatic changes in the distance from Canopus. Also, Arrakis has two moons, one of which, Krellin, was destroyed, creating a ring structure around the planet. The day-night cyclone Arrakis is said to be affected by these moons, causing variations in the length of day, which can range wildly from 3.8 to as many as 51 hours. How this could affect the temperatures, though, is unclear. Variability in day length is certainly something that could contribute to regular temperatures. Arrakis's atmospheric dust scatters Canopus's light, leading to an uniformly dull sky. Global wind speeds are similar to the Earth's, averaging around 20 km per hour. Known for its spice, a precious resource in the universe, Arrakis's unique environmental conditions, shaped by its orbit and its moons, would presumably have contributed to the creation of this valuable substance. Life on Arrakis, including the sunworms, may have evolved during these ice ages, or periods of thaw adapting to the changing environment. It may also have migrated from a further away distance, and Canopus, with its irregular stellar evolution and X-ray emissions, although it may not be an ideal candidate for life to originate, perhaps its own unique characteristics could at least explain the presence of spice on Arrakis, if not life itself, which of course what the novels are all about. As a fan, without wanting to pour criticism on the Dune novels, I don't fully think there are explanations that could realistically explain why Dune has remained within habitation, being so close to a star that's over 10,000 times more luminous than our sun. Let me know in the comments if you have any better ideas how it could remain habitable. Perhaps at some point, a fork in the road for the franchise approaches, where either an incredible explanation that would need to arise, or perhaps more likely, a quiet reassessment of where Dune might actually be found in the system, and if even at all given that Canopus isn't really the type of star we would expect to find any kind of life, least of all intelligent life. Until then though, let's not overthink things too much, enjoy the movie, and marvel at this star that is perhaps the most important star throughout human history in Earth's night sky. Canopus is a giant verging on supergiant star in the local vicinity. The fictional planet Arrakis has become renowned for its instability and complexity. Canopus's irregular stellar evolution and the influence of other planets in the system, including two moons, could have somehow contributed to Arrakis's unique climate and the development of valuable resources such as spice. While Arrakis may not be a stable world like Earth, in the novel it has somehow in the face of a white yellow giant star produced conditions conducted to life and precious substances. Indeed, the fictional world Arrakis is a planet marked by its irregularities. However, an interesting twist means that in these irregularities, Arrakis has finally found common ground with its magnificent host star of Canopus itself. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and it could be your idea that shows up next week. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.